Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, we covered the fundamentals of performance monitoring. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first and then continuing this video. In this video, we will explore the native monitoring tools provided by the Windows operating system. These tools are handy when a dedicated monitoring setup is unavailable in the testing environment. So without any further delay, let's get started. Before diving into our main topic, let's quickly review some fundamental server concepts. This is because during our performance performance testing, it is one of our responsibility to monitor the server behavior. For a deeper understanding, I encourage you to explore the videos in module 3. Okay? As you know, whenever a user sends a request in any application, it gets directed to one of the servers for processing. Then the server processes it and gives the response back to the user. Even in our performance test executions, we will send requests from our load generators or worker nodes to the servers. Okay? So companies will buy the servers from different providers and maintain them on the premises. These days, many organizations are leveraging services from cloud providers like AWS, Azure, and GCP. So, these providers will provide the required number of servers and other resources to the clients with a pay-as-you-go model. With this model, the client will only pay for the resources that they have used. Okay? In a server, there are three main important hardware components. The processor, which does the computing nothing but performs tasks, solves problems, or processes data, etc. And then memory, which stores information temporarily, and storage, where the data is stored for long term. In the server, there are other parts also exist, but these three are important ones. Okay? So the computer hardware can only understand the binary language consisting of zeros and ones. So it's challenging for humans to communicate directly with the computer hardware. That's where the operating system also known as OS comes to the rescue. An operating system manages all other applications and programs in a computer or server and it is loaded into the system by a boot program. It helps the applications to interact with the computer's hardware. We can even think of it as a mediator between hardware and the applications or software. So on a high level, when the user sends a request from a browser, First, it will go to the software running on the server. Then the server will communicate that request to the hardware via the operating system. Some of the common functions of the operating system, memory management. It manages the main memory, allocating and deallocating it as necessary for various processes. And then processor management. This involves managing the CPU's time and resources among the various processes. Device management. The voice regulates the connection and interaction with various input and output devices through device drivers. Storage management. The OS is also responsible for storing and accepting files and directories, optimizing the use of various storage devices, and there will be many more functions. Okay? There are many operating systems are available in the market. In companies, Windows and Linux operating systems are commonly used. As I stated in other videos, our job is not just to push the load on the server. It is also our responsibility to monitor the server behavior as well. So that if there are any issues, the application team can fix them and ensure that there is no impact on their customers. So we have different tools available in the market to monitor the server. Some monitoring tools are built in within the operating system while others are provided by specific organizations. If you want to leverage those tools, then we may need to purchase their licenses. Okay? So in this video, we will look at some of the commonly used Windows operating system native monitoring tools. In Windows, there are many built-in tools available for monitoring purposes. The most commonly used ones are Task Manager and Performance Monitor, also called as Puffmon. Now let's look at these tools practically to understand more about them. First, let's talk about the Task Manager. This is the default utility that comes with any Windows system. To open the Task Manager, there are multiple ways. One method is by pressing the Control Shift Escape, which will open the Task Manager, or you can press Control Alt Delete and then select the Task Manager. Or the simplest way is by right clicking the Task Bar and then selecting the Task Manager. Okay. In any method, it will open this Task Manager utility. With this utility, we can monitor the performance of the system or different processes running onto the system. Basically, the task manager provides the information about the performance and different processes running on the system. Okay? They have categorized this information into different tabs like processes, performance, app history. We will go through all these tabs to understand the different information that we can get it from this task manager. By default, it will open the processes tab. So in this process tab, we can find the different processes currently active in the system. So they have categorized the processes into different groups like 
like apps, background processes, and then Windows processes. Okay, here the process means a running instance of a program or a system task that is currently active. Okay, if you notice in the apps group, we have four different processes showing it one Windows Explorer, Task Manager, OBS Studio, and Google Chrome. So these are the current application programs that I have opened in this Windows laptop. So that is why the system is showing them as a separate process and then it is giving some other information about that process. So generally whenever our laptop frozen, what we will do is we will come to this task manager and then identify that particular application program and then we will end the program so that it will release the resources of the system so that our system can function normally. So along with the process information, it is also providing us the resource consumption of this process. Like I said before, the three main hardware components of any system is the CPU, memory and then storage, right? Here we can find those hardware resources consumption in terms of percentage and then along with we also getting the network information. So for example, this particular Google Chrome process is currently consuming 0% of CPU and then 302 megabytes of memory and then 0 megabits per second of disks. Okay, so whenever we are doing any load test, we should check any particular application program is consuming more resources in terms of CPU memory or disk. So the way we can identify is by coming to this task manager and then see which process consuming more memory. So here on the top, we can see the overall system utilization. So overall currently CPU is 7% getting utilized and then 41% of memory, 1% of disk, which is normal. If any particular program is taking more CPU, then that's where the performance issues arises okay here the cpu means how much busy the processor is by executing the assigned task let's say if the cpu is 100 percent then the processor is busy if any requests come to this particular system for cpu processing then those requests will be in queue because whatever that current task needs to be completed then only the cpu can take up the new task right so when we do the load test for some reason if the server cpu is utilizing 100 percent then all the requests will be in queue eventually the response time of the request will grow because it is waiting for cpu time to process that request so the next one is memory usage this is actually the ram statistics ram means random access memory with this matrix we can understand how much of memory is being occupied in with this current task for some reason if the memory is again 100 percent being utilized then that is a bottleneck we need to understand which particular application is consuming the more memory and similarly we have disk usage this is the place where the data will be permanently stored like we have c drive d drive right so it is providing the overall those disk utilizations if the disk is full again we cannot store any data onto the system then that is another bottleneck we need to understand which particular file system or the folder is full and then we may need to work with the support teams to clean those spaces okay so before we do any load test we also need to verify this system usage metrics like cpu memory and disk and make sure they are in the normal state for example if the cpu is 100 percent before starting the actual load test then there is no point of running the test because it is already busy and whatever that load you are going to put on top of that those will get impacted right so first we need to work with the infrastructure team to understand why that system has 100 percent cpu and try to fix that issue first and then only we need to start the load test okay this is all about the processes tab the next one is performance here we can get the same stats in graphical user interface so you can see the cpu graph and this is the real time data right like currently how much cpu being utilized and those metrics are represented in a graphical format and underneath the graph we can also see the utilization metrics like it is utilizing 10 percent and it is also providing the the number of process running on the system number of threads and the system uptime and also the core information like how many cores are there in the system how many logical processes are there so by default this utilization is being displayed as a overall system level if you want to have this graph individual processor level you can also do that by right clicking the graph and then change graph to logical process now it will show the graphs of individual processor this way we can understand is there any particular processor is so busy right so we can identify the root cause for that and then we can fix that issue similarly we have memory graphs disk graphs and network graphs so you can use these graphs to understand how the cpu or the memory or the disk being utilized again these are the real-time metrics we cannot go back to past to get the metrics of the system resource usage okay and then we have app history so this tab provides the historical data on resource usage by 
various windows apps over time so these are all the different applications running on the system and it is providing the this application cpu usage or network usage okay for some reason a particular application is taking more cpu we can try to dig deeper and understand why it is consuming more cpu time okay and then we have startup apps here it will show the list of applications that will run when we start the system so whenever you are trying to start the server or your laptop if it is taking more time for loading the operating system then we need to check if there are any startup apps are included right so because it needs time to load this application so that is why the boot process might be delayed so you can come to the startup apps and then see what are all the different startup apps and then you can disable them so that your operating system will be load much faster and then next one is the user tabs in the multi environment if multiple people are trying to connect to the server then those users information will be shown in the users tab since it is laptop and it is only showing the current users that are being logged into the system okay if multiple users are being logged in and for some reason one particular user is consuming more resource then we can also investigate that particular user activity to understand the reasons behind the more system resource consumption okay and then we have the details tab this is also similar to process tab but the only difference is it will give you more information about the individual processes for example it will tell you the process executable name and then process id for every process in the system it will assign a unique id so so that is the id will help cpu to do some task on that process so if you notice for every process there will be a unique process id and then it will tell the process status and we can also see the user whether it is the actual user or the system process or the system it is using to run the process and then we also have the cpu memory and then description of the process okay and finally we have service tab so this service tab lists all the system services along with their statuses whether they are running or stop etc and startup type whether it is scheduled to start automatically or whether it is scheduled to start manually the main difference between service and a process is a service is a program which runs in the background and does not terminate unless it encounters a problems that means whenever we start the system this services will start background without user intervention for some reason if there is a problem with that service then only it will stop okay then the user has to come to the services tab and then restart that service whereas the process is a program which is started by the system or the application okay that process will be terminated once its purpose is done for example if i go back to processes tab i can see there are four applications like google chrome obs studio task manager and windows explorer is running so if i close the windows explorer program then that will terminate the process so this is the main difference for the services these are the background services those will be run without user intervention whereas the process whenever we open any application that will be considered as a process then the system will create an entry for that in the apps group and that entry will be removed whenever we close the program okay and then we also have settings tab to make some changes to the task manager setting for example in the general section we have default startup page set to processes that is why whenever we open any task manager it will shows the processes tab if you want to see the performance as your default startup page then you can make the change here okay you can also change the app theme by default it is show as a light and then you can even make it to dark or whatever you can make necessary changes to this task manager settings based on your need in real time we will not use task manager for load test monitoring purpose because it will only provide you the real time data when we do a load test we will schedule the test for 2 hours if it is a peak load test if it is an endurance or soak test it will run for 8 hours right we cannot sit in front of the system for that 8 hours period to understand how the server performance is right so that is why in real time we are not going to use task manager however if there is an issue before we starting the test we notice that that particular server cpu is 100 percent then what we will do is we will log into the server if we have access or we can request the infrastructure support team they will log into the server and then they will see the task manager if it is a windows server to understand which particular process is being consumed more cpu so that way we can understand the bottleneck this is a handy tool for any windows server if we don't have any application monitoring tools then we can at least use this task manager to understand the current system behavior okay so the next utility that we are going to discuss is perfmon this is also called as performance monitor okay to open the perfmon go to search and then type perfmon 
and select the performance monitor. So this will open the performance monitor. By default, when we open the performance monitor, it will show the system summary in terms of system resources like memory, network, physical disk and processor information. This is the real time information of this current system. Okay. Along with that, it is also providing a new resource monitor, which will help us to get more details about the hardware resources like CPU, disk, network and memory and also the system resources which is used by the operating system services and other running applications. Okay. So we can open that resource monitor by clicking the open resource monitor link here. Here also we can get the stats of different processes in terms of CPU, memory, disk and network. Okay. So this is another utility that we can use to understand what is happening with the current system. On the right hand side we can see the graphs. This is the CPU total graph. In this utility, we can also kill the process by right clicking that particular process and then selecting the end process. Okay. Next, let's click on performance monitor under monitoring tools. So here we can see the different performance metrics of the system. By default, it will provide you the processor time metric. So which will help us to understand how much busy our process is currently. And this is also a real time metric. And if you want to add more counters you can also add that by clicking the plus symbol here it will tell us all the different available counters lists so we can pick and choose the required counter so if we are adding the counters from this list that counter will monitor the current system behavior we have an option to add this counter to a remote machine for example if we have a database server and we want to monitor using perfman then we can add that system from this browse option and then selecting that server and then choosing the appropriate counter. So that will help us to monitor the remote server directly from this current machine. Okay. So since I don't have any remote machine, so I'm going to select a couple of metrics and then try to show you how we can monitor the system resources. Okay. So by default, like I said, the processor time is already added. So let's add a metric for memory. So select the memory and then expand it to see the different kinds of metrics that are available for memory. From this list, select the available bytes, so which will tell us how much memory is available in the system. Okay. So after selecting that particular metric, click add and then select. Okay. So that will add the metric over here. So right now we can see the processor time. If we go further down, we can see the available M bytes as well. Okay. If you want to customize this metric, you just need to double click that metric, which will open the properties for different metrics configured in this performance monitor view. So select the available M bytes and let's change the color to differentiate the processor time versus the available M bytes. Okay. And even if you want to change the width, you can also do that by selecting this. And then you have different other options. For example, if you want to give a title to this view, you can give that like performance overview, or if you want to give some legend to the vertical axis, you can also give from here. Okay. And you can change the scale and all other configuration that you would like to change on this view. Okay. Once you make all the necessary changes, click OK. So here we can see the performance overview as a title for this and then two different metrics like the available M bytes as well as the processor time. Let's add one more metric which is related to the physical disk. So select the physical disk and then expand to see and then select the percentage disk time and then click add and click OK. Okay. So we have three metrics configured now. So you can see they're in three different colors. And if you want to delete any existing counter, you can also do that by selecting that particular counter and then selecting this delete key. So that will remove the counter from this view. Okay. So there are other options also available here. You can change the graph type right now it is showing as line you can change it to histogram bar or you can change it to report so based on the requirement you can choose the appropriate graph and then we have an option to copy and paste the counter and you can also freeze the display okay so these are all the different options that we have available in performance monitor like i said in this view we can only get the real time data that means we can understand the system behavior at the given current time however in all our load tests we schedule the test for two hours eight hours based on the type of the test right so you must be thinking how can we get this system metrics over a period of time so that's what we are going to see next so what we need to do is we need to create a data collector set so that way we can get a matrix or metrics for a period of time okay so to create a data collector set we need to select the data collector sets 
folder and here we can see different subfolders like user defined system event traces and startup event traces so whatever the user created the collectors will comes under this user defined group and there are some data collector sets that are available for system diagnosis or understand the system performance okay and then there are some event traces also available to troubleshoot further in case of any issues so since we are going to define our own data collector so we need to select the user defined and then right click select new and then select the data collector set so it will ask us to provide a name so give a meaningful name performance metrics and then we have an option to choose the data collector from a template or we can create our own by selecting the create manually so let's select the create manually because we want to create our own metrics okay and then click next and here it is asking us to select the type of data that we want to include in the data collector set so we have an option to include performance counter event trace data system configuration information so for now let's stick with the performance counter because that is what we are going to learn in this session okay so select the performance counter and then click next and here we need to add all the counters so whatever the counters that we want to monitor on the system we should add it here so let's click add again that will take us to the same available counters window so here we need to select what are all the different counters that we want to be part of this data collector set okay so let's select one counter from processor which is processor time and then here instances you can select the total so total means overall system utilization you can also go individual process level as well but for this demonstration purpose we will stick with the total okay so click add and then let's select one for memory go to memory section and then select available m bytes okay and then click add so these are the two counters that we want to be part of this data collector set you can add n number of counters based on the requirement okay so once you added all the counters then click okay next we need to specify the sample interval based on the configuration the system will try to capture those metrics using the added counters okay if you are saying sample interval 15 seconds then the system will capture the metric every 15 seconds since this is a demonstration purpose we don't want to wait for long so let's make it as one second as a sample interval so that we can get the handful data for these two metrics okay you can even change the units by default it will be selected as seconds you can change it to minutes hours days and weeks so based on the type of test we will configure the sample interval for example if you are doing a test for 8 hours it does not make sense to capture the metric for every 1 second right so you may be capturing for 30 seconds sample interval or 1 minute it depends okay and then click next and we here we need to specify where exactly we want these metrics to be stored okay by default it is telling it will show it in the system drive perf log admin performance mode if you want to store it in a different directory you can also select here so let's save it in the downloads folder okay and then click okay so system will try to collect the metrics and then it will store those metrics in this directory okay and then click next so next we need to choose whether we want to see the properties of this data collector or if you want to start the data collector set or if you just want to save and close so just select the save and close and then click finish so that will create the data collector set so this is the data collector set that we have created just select the performance metrics data collector set and then go to properties so here there are different properties that we can set for this data collector set okay so if you want to add a description to this you can very well add it and then again if you want to change the data collector path you can do that by updating the write directory and there are other options like sub directory and sub directory name format we can also specify it so you can also see the example directory where it is telling us how it will store this data collector set in the system and if you want to give access to any other users to this collector you can also do that in the security tab and you can also schedule this collector so that you don't need to log into each server or you don't need to log into the server to start the collector okay you can click add and then define the schedule when you want to start this data collector set and then you can also specify some stop conditions so based on the condition the system will stop the data set collector so that way the system will not collect any other metrics using this data set collector and you can also run some specific task for this data set collector in this properties dialog in real time we mostly use schedule and stop condition tabs to configure the properties for the data collector set okay and once you configured everything then click apply and click okay 
and then select the performance matrix which will show the actual data collector set information so select the data collector 0 1 and then right click go to properties because we need to make one specific configuration change which is the format of the file by default the collected data will be saved in a binary format so we want this to be saved in a comma separated so that we can open these matrix in excel and then we can do some graphs and everything okay once you make these changes click apply and then click ok so after configuring all the properties the next step is we need to start the data collector set so that system will start collecting the matrix using the counters defined inside this data collector set to start the data collector set we can right click on the data collector and then select the start or we can even select this button from this toolbar okay so right click and then select start which will instruct system to start collecting the data so right now you can see it is collecting the matrix and it is trying to store the data in this particular path okay so we will let it run for one minute and then after that we will stop this collector and then we can go through those metrics so let's wait for a minute and then we will stop this data collector set so now let's stop the data collector set i hope it might collect the required data for us for analysis purpose okay so to stop the data set collector right click the data collector set and then select stop okay so now system is not collecting any more data using those counters okay now the next step is we will review the data right so we need to go to this particular path to select the files here we can see the timestamp and then available m bytes data for each second and then also the processor time so let's say if you want to graph this data so what we can do is we can duplicate this sheet let's name it as memory and then let's name the other one as cpu okay so let's delete the m bytes from this so that we can view the processor time so let's select the entire data and then go to insert and then select the line graph so this will give us a nice processor time graph so we can understand how much cpu being utilized during the period that we have collected this data so it is almost less than four percent so we can write an observation saying that during the load test the system cpu utilization is less than four percent okay similarly we can create a graph for memory so this is the way we can use pef1 to collect the different metrics and then export the data and create graphs and present it to the client so these are the two utilities we can make use of it in case if we don't have any application performance monitoring tools in our environment to collect the system resources from different servers okay along with this for windows there are other utilities also available so if we open browser and then look for process explorer for windows this is another utility windows is providing but by default this utility is not available in the system if anybody wants to use this utility to do more deeper analysis for any given process then they need to download it and then run it on the system so there are other utilities like you can see there is Procdump, portman list ELL. so there are so many utilities that can help us to do more analysis based on the need we can go through these utilities and then see which one is suitable for our analysis purpose and then do the analysis using those utilities okay i have also listed different performance counters along with those thresholds in our pt must have series github repo so i'll provide you the link in the description so that you can also go through the different important counters and the purpose of that counter and what is the standard threshold that companies will use to monitor those counters okay for example the processor time the standard threshold is less than 60 again this may be different based on the client to client i just give in a general sense so we need to gather these requirements from the clients during our planning session to understand what are all the acceptable thresholds for the system resources and then we will measure against them okay so you can also add these metrics to the performance and then do some practice so that you will understand how the system behavior during the load test okay I will also provide you some other links which will help us to understand more about this performance monitor okay so that's it for this video thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me i hope you found this video helpful if you have any questions or want to share your experiences feel free to leave a comment below all the video notes have been uploaded in github and you can find the link in the description if you are new to our channel please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited i'll see you in the next video in this module until then take care stay safe and keep planning